Welcome to Heart Change You live stream. This is the Real Questions edition where on, on Tuesdays we get together and uh, we have our guests ask questions. And so uh, actually let me introduce them before I jump in and say the rest. Rebecca, it's great to have you with us. Great to be here. And uh, you're almost becoming a pro here, you know? Oh, I mean, I, I don't know how many weeks it's been, but it's it's been at least a few. Yeah. And so we're working on that. And Heather, let's see, let me, let's see. I think April, we six go months. all the way back to, it's been six months yeah. since you sat in that chair. Are you yeah. nervous? I'm not, but I'm really thankful to be here. Well, it's great to have you back with yeah. us. I, we, we have, I don't know that this is the right word, but we have sparred in these seats a time or two before. We have indeed. I, I don't know that I would say there's a lot of conflict, but but hey, we enjoy challenging each other mm -hmm. on some of these topics, and so it's been kind of fun, and it's great to have you back in the chair for a couple of programs here. Yeah, I'm so thankful to be here. So, Thank you. And, and just a programming note, which I started to do right off the top, but I decided to introduce the guests first. We are actually going to be shutting down for the next couple of months on the holidays. We'll do our Friday program. We'll still have one more program, but actually both of these are recorded. So if you have questions, we encourage you to go to heartchangeyou.com. We potentially will jump in and do an impromptu live stream or we'll get back with you in writing. Uh, we still want to communicate, but with the holidays coming, and a num number of other priorities of things that we're trying to do in the ministry in terms of production of materials. We felt like it was smart to just shut the live stream down here for the next couple of months, except like I say, a few impromptus. So continue to bring us your questions. We're glad to have you join us. And uh, again, go back and listen to some of the old ones and pass them around. That, that would be a great activity. Today's the real questions version. So who gets to go first it's the opportunity to uh try to stump me i guess yeah. you know i it, it is interesting one of the things that we've found with me and the way i function is it, it actually is helpful for me to kind of like spring things on me to some extent i tend to i don't know it's more fun or i'm whatever anyway gives the spirit so, room to move so what do you have um i would like to ask about how to judge our growth like how can we see that we've made improvements or whatnot for heart change i think the first word that i'm going to use is just objective and it's virtually impossible for us to be really objective about ourselves and another another phrase that i'm going to use is reliable what you should learn over a period of time is that I'm reasonably reliable in these areas. I am not reliable in these other areas. So that's the first thing that I'm going to challenge is step back. There will be areas where you can take a look at and you can go, wow, you can lay down the markers. Okay, I used to do this, now I'm doing this. You can lay down those markers and you can gauge it and you can feel good about it. And there will be areas like that that you find out that your judgment is reliable. And then you will have areas that you really know that you absolutely are not reliable. And how you know that, I'm going to start first of all with the Bible. Uh, if you are responding in some way that is justifying behaviors uh, we have that and i see that quite a bit and you're looking in the scriptures and it's saying don't do this and you're like well okay let's just make a little room and a few excuses and i've come a long ways and and and, and again some of that is reasonable some of that is is absolutely reasonable that i'm growing uh you know i'm failing forward i'm not where I want to be. Some of that's reasonable, but when you're in those kinds of areas, I really encourage you. Have somebody in your life that that's not critical, mm -hmm. but they're also not going to just totally give you a pass. Right. I mean, you, you need somebody in your life who's a truth teller, who's not going to discourage you, not going to beat up on you, but is, is going to speak what needs, needs to be spoken. If you don't have that, how are you going to learn when you're able to be objective 
and be a reasonably good judge of yourself when you're able to be, same, you know, kind of a parallel, reliable versus when you're not. In my own life, and you know, anything in that workaholic, put in hours, complete tasks, uh, I know that I'm not reliable. And so somewhere along the line, I, I know that, okay, I, I need to get input from other people. And, and so there's areas of my life that I've learned that I'm not reliable. It's not a problem. It's just, that's just the way it works. So I would say you can't give a good answer to that question until you start to define the different areas. And you're like, okay, here I feel pretty good about my judgment. And people seem to validate that. So you can kind of relax in that area and, and, and be okay. But there will be other areas where you need input every day, yeah. all the time, everywhere. And sometimes it's more positive people. Sometimes you, you're overly critical of yourself. And so you consistently need positive people in that area. And again, this gets hard. That's where I'm back to being objective. You need to know the difference between do I need hard people who are challenging me or do I need uh, people who are encouraging me? And, and sometimes you need some of both, but the people who are big self-haters, wouldn't have any at the table, <laughs> the people who are big self-haters need to err more on the positive side, mm -hmm. and the people who are more in the pride zone need to err on the truth-teller side, where do I have that person in my life? and. If I don't, I need to get one. If I do, I need to cultivate them, give them permission, et cetera. Yeah, that's good. No, no other comments? No. You're just going to give me that's good? I think that's good. Well, let me ask you a question. Yes. So as I was talking about that, do you have a good sense of where I'm reliable, not reliable, objective, not objective? For myself? Yes. Um, I, I think I kind of fall along the lines, like on the working and whatnot. I mean, it's why would I not? Like that's always that's been my question previously. Is as well, if I don't do it, who's going to? Type of you know. So I need I need other people's input. But I love my favorite part of it was just that we need people. Mm -hmm. Like, and it's just such an important, and especially in these areas where we. I mean, I don't want I don't want somebody to point out my faults. I have to really know that I can trust them and that they love me. I mean, so that relationship that I've been walking with them to get to those points that we can have those tough conversations. I mean, it's just to put the importance there, I think is, is big. That way we can find those places. So do you also then feel relatively confident that at least at this point, I've got people in my life, I've invited them in, I've given them permission to speak to where I can, I can go to bed at night feeling like I have a good handle on truth and understanding? I'm getting better. And especially like for myself, I know I what I didn't even understand how far I kept people, you know, we we had this nice interaction. It was, you know, and transactional people bothered me. Like I'm like, how could you not be so thoughtful or whatnot? And when I really look at what I'm doing, I'm like, ew, I'm transactional. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm very like, we had a job, we got it done, it was pleasant, you know, check. And, and so learning that to let go of that so that I don't have so con control over it. <laughs> mm -hmm. so. so the people pleaser, get her done, some of those kind of things kind of were the priority. And so then I need to, I need people who see a little bit deeper and challenge me is, yeah. is what you would say. Yeah. And, and, and trust, I mean, that trust being is so big. It's not, I mean, like even when I, when I saw that I was, really prideful and rebellious is when my daughter first told me drive safe and I was like who are you to tell me how to drive and I was like why would I think that <laughs> like she just said drive safe what's going on inside me that I would get so offended at that and and then to just take that moment of oh that's there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that needs to be dug up <laughs> We tend to be our own worst critics. Yeah. The person that we are the most blind to, I say over and over again, if you look through Proverbs, is ourselves. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that flies in the face of our culture. Because what our culture says is, you know you better than anybody else knows you. And I'm like, no, that's like the exact opposite of yeah. biblical truth. So just learning that and believing that piece, inviting people in, 
getting to those places where, hey, there, I'm, I'm more objective here, more consistent here, I'm not so good here, I really need people and, and people I can trust. Yeah, and I think that's been huge too in even loving myself is seeing how people love me, how they receive me and things. So like these lies that I have, that I the self-talk and whatnot, I mean, it can be undone when I, this, this is a thing, like this person they're not just blowing smoke to me, you know? I mm-hmm. mean, and, and so that's another reason why it's so important to have others. Amen, amen, amen. Well, Heather, what, what do you have for me? Or maybe you just wanna give us some incredible wisdom that you've stored up over the last six months. I, you know, it doesn't have to be a question, but it's your shot on the show to uh, share something or ask a question or whatever. The question that was coming to me earlier before the show was about decision making and when you're when you're facing a decision a a crossroads in your life um what's your process for choosing a direction well i'm going to start with something that i say over and over again you think inside of where you are spiritually you're going to choose inside of where you are spiritually. So let's go back to the Sermon on the Mount, which I say over and over again, get your own heart right first. And what people think is, well, I'll think really hard and I'll work at this decision. And when I finally come to a peace about my decision, then I'll feel better about life. And I'm going to say, until you come to a peace, you won't make a better decision. And, and so that's, people frequently allow the decision to become too front and center. And, and so then their whole world becomes involved in that. And now I feel pressure and it's like, okay, I've got to make a good decision. I've got to make a right decision. And I always like to start at, uh, you can't make a good decision unless God is involved in it. And God is not going to be involved in that decision unless your heart gets right. Because God comes to those who make room for him. I'm using all of my one-liners here, all, all in one mix. Okay. Well, it's the last show. Yeah, it's a, yeah. <laughs> but God comes to those who make room for him. When, when you're all anxious about a decision, I have to make the right decision, et cetera. Very few decisions need to be made in the time pressure that we put them in. And if there's one thing I teach consistently in the Omega Project, slow it down, slow it down, slow it down. Let me, let me, let me just repeat that to you one more time in case you missed it, slow it down. And, and the reason for that is what I'm talking about. You've got to get into a better place spiritually. You slow it down, you wait so far beyond your comfort zone to where, you know, we're always angry at God because he never shows up on time. He's always a little too late. You know, I say, well, according to whose time time (laughs) clock? And and, and so you have all of, and, and so no, slow it down when you get to a point to where it's fully surrendered. Okay, another principle. Your heart can't get to a right place until you, what, fully surrender it to God, trust God. You're not standing in your own wisdom. You're not trying to fix your own stuff. You're, you're trying to hear from God. And so you get, that, you get that surrendered place. You get to a place where, oh, I don't have to make the right decision. I'm not playing God here. The entire world doesn't land on me. And, and so you, you, you get into that kind of a place that's when you're going to tend to make much better decisions. Now, I'm also going to throw one other thing out there just in case there might be some people out there who are procrastinators, who their way of making a decision is to refuse to make a decision. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about procrastination. I'm not talking about refusing to make a decision and allowing my refusal to make a decision to become my decision because refusing to make a decision is a decision. When I talk about slowing down, I am talking about keeping this thing surrendered to God, being in the scriptures, praying, getting counsel from other people, but going through a process to where I'm, I'm surrendering, I'm waiting on God, I'm getting to peace first, then making the decision second out of that peace. And and what I also also like with that, if I make a decision and my peace leaves immediately, it just might be the wrong decision no matter how logical it is. If I don't get to peace first, I I don't have that as my guide. 
So you get to peace first. You make a decision. I've seen this happen many times in my life. You make that decision. God kind of goes, you know, and, and now my conscience is stirred up and I don't feel good about the decision. And I'm like, maybe I better revisit that decision. And, and so I, I slow it down at that point. I go back. I resurrender it to God. Hopefully, I make the opposite decision. And, oh, wow, there is a peace. Well, or I make the opposite decision, there's still no peace. And so then a lot of times what you have, line in the Lord's Prayer that I think many people miss on earth as it is in heaven. Maybe my timing is off. Maybe my manner is off. Maybe I'm making a decision, but there's, there's a different way to do it. There's a different timing to do it. There's different people that need to be involved in the decision, or I need to do more research. If there's no peace either way, again, if you possibly can, slow it down, take a deep breath, do more research, try to figure out which way to go. Anyway, that's it. That's all I got. I'm, I'm totally done. <laughs> totally makes sense. Thank you. And I see you walk that out in your own life. And one thing that, one of the first things that really appealed to me, like this is a guy who has some answers for me, is your demeanor. You know, when, just like you're sitting right now, just kind of lean back, not in a huge hurry. He gets a lot done. For all your talk about being a workaholic, he gets a lot done, you're productive, but you never feel, I don't know what's going on on the inside of you, but you never feel like, I need you to do this right away, urgent, urgent, urgent. And that for me is like, oh, I need that. Because mm -hmm. inside I have this, this anxiety constantly that there's something I'm missing or, you know, something that needs to happen quickly. And just when I saw that demeanor in you, this piece, I was like, oh, that's, I need some of that. How do I get that? And I do, as frustrated as I have personally been with you at times for not making a decision when I want you to make a decision, I see the fruit of that mm -hmm. is peace, mm -hmm. which is, you know, part of our armor of God is the peace of God on our feet. And boy, do I need that. So thank you. Well, for many years I have pushed. Um, you, you're a mini me except uh, 20 years younger or whatever it is. So, I mean, I've been through those years of realizing what happens when I push. And yes, I feel the frustration on the inside because I'm a mover, shaker, get after it, get it done. But I've also seen God call me, God call the ministry to things that are so far beyond my capability that it didn't matter how fast I ran, it wasn't going to happen. And then I watch God work it out and do those things. I'm going to say, despite me, <laughs> or despite a lot of times when, through the years, when, when those pressure zones hit, Instead of being able to run faster, harder, a lot of times it literally put me down. I mean, I, I went through periods in my life where I would have back spasms. And, mm -hmm. and literally because of the anxiety levels, it would, it would hit so hard that I literally, it's like I've got 10 things I need to do and next thing you know, I'm just totally incapacitated where I can do none of the above. And so I've, I've had some schooling from my heavenly father yeah. who who just said no it's not going to work like that that's not how it's going to be and and you know, you know for the record since i'm being honest about these things uh i may or may not be calm on the inside when i'm telling you that <laughs> right but but i have learned I, I i think on the dairy farm i i saw this i mean every job that i have worked in my life has been in a sense understaffed, overchallenged, underpaid. I mean, all of the different things like that. And I and so I've over and over again. I've just, I've watched God work, and and that's that's part of what allows me to be able to look at you and say, okay, stop. I know you're a perfectionist, and you need. 320 things done in the next week in order for this task to be accomplished. And you might only get three of those done. Mm -hmm. 
and God's able to use those three if that's that if that's where it is and lo and behold it'll work out and and I, I feel like I have learned that and I do walk in that to a reasonable degree some of the time but fortunately you're you don't get to see me at home when, the way my wife does and uh, the, the other side of me. So, you know, when I'm in my professional fa- place, you know, I, I'm cool and calm and collected. So, but I'm, I'm glad that that has been a benefit to you. It has. Thank you. So, well, I think we'll wrap it up. The last of our real questions versions on the live feature and we, we will be back in some form, but uh, just letting you know that, that we're wrapping up this form for through the holidays. But thank you for joining us. And remember, heartchangeyou.com. And uh, we look forward to continuing to hear from you. And we will see you sometime on Heart Change You live stream.